Glad to have y'all downtown at Moore Studios. Used to always start up my stories. I feel a little bit like the old lightning bug that backed into the fan. I'm delighted to have y'all. Is that a good story to start off with? <laughs> Mr. Moore and Mr. Duty were kind of really corny folks and they did those things. I worked on this a little bit to put it together and how many of the folks say they really want to do the history of it. So this is what I'm certainly am pleased to have you to hopefully we record some of this. In 1903, Mr. Robert A. Moore met Miss Patty Hobson Moore. Mr. Robert A. Moore is from Fairfax County, North Carolina. Miss Patty is from Alabama. And why they decided to come here and open Moore Studio, I do not know. But sometimes we look at it, it may, might have been 1904, but we're pretty sure it was 1903 or 1904. The things that I'm a third generation, and I've got all of his things, a lot of his things, the second generation, what they've changed. We're going to talk about the history and a little bit later tonight. We're going to get these out where you can put a cloth over your head and look through and people upside down and doing all the things like that. I think the thing that amazes me so very much is how fortunate we are today. And when I started in the early 60s and 50s, how much has changed even to what it is today. But I'm telling you, in those days, guys, they really had to work at a profession to do those things. If you can imagine at that time, like when you would go to actually make a photo, you would take a holder, and this holder would have one sheet of film in it. And if you would like to come and get these and let these look at these, these are actually five by seven sheets of film that was on glass before plastic was invented. And he would put this film into this little holder, put it in his camera, open it up and count to about four or five, and there was no shutters, and that's how he made his photos. And you think about that today from what it is now, it's really something, and you look at the glass negatives, and it's just really amazing the things he went through to do that. Then the next thing after that, after you really went and made the photo, then you've got to process them. And you've got to realize there was no store to go buy your chemicals to do. So Mr. Moore actually had a book and he mixed all of his chemistry from scratch. And so this has been one of my prized possession, a scale. And you actually sit down and he'd go buy all the containers. He'd want real contrasty, not as contrasty. He would mix up his chemistry and do. If you folks have ever done that, you realize your chemistry doesn't last very long. So you mix up enough to run your batches and do things from there. I did this a different thing, a little different way with a high school annual group. And some of the kids said, I think Mr. Moore's on drugs because he's got scales. So I don't get them out a lot, but I'm not on drugs. Maybe dark room smells or something like that. But if you'll just think back, if you had to actually go get your film and you're going to make one photo. And in the days of doing those, understand in a church, when you use the flash powder, sometime it'd be so much smoke, you might have to wait a few minutes for the smoke to clear before you can make another photo. How many we can make just this quick? And the ways that he did it, I think the thing that still amazes me so very much is his ability to do his lighting. We still practice that same lighting today. The second generation, I'm the third generation, and we got a fourth generation started. But the lighting is a whole thing. You know, you really can't do real well making photos unless you have light. And to be able to do that, you got to realize there was no electricity. So you'd have big opens. And I've got a young person they were studying said, I'm going to do a painting photo. That's where you have one big open bank of light coming in. Well, that's all they had. Then they put up reflectors. And you learned all of those things. You really had to learn lighting before you could do any of those other things. The other thing that amazed me so much is actually go and study the anatomy of a body and how a man would stand and how a woman would stand. And the reason you want to do that, they want to look as, as good as they are. In the painting things, Mr. Moore would do the photography, and Ms. Moore would sit down and do all the painting on top of that particular photo. You could make them any way from there. So it's just amazing those first years of all the things and how much they had to work at it compared to how little we work at it today. But I'm going to tell you, when I started, I really thought I had it tough, too, till you start studying these things. Because even in my days, my camera, I think it was, Richard asked me the other night, what was probably the hardest photo I ever made. Have you ever used a camera that wasn't autofocus? Anybody? 
Well, I did, Argo Collier used to be a trucking company in Martin, Tennessee. And I got the call to go make photos. They were fixing to start hauling refrigerated foods. We did steaks, we did lobster and everything, but he wanted a chicken. And to go out in the chicken yard and hope that chicken's gonna stand still because where you focus, if he moves, it's out of focus. You only get one, you put it back in and that's all there is. And sit there and do, and finally after an hour, we got some fishing line and staked that sucker out so he couldn't move and made the photo. But I'm, I'm telling you, and another thing on the out of focus thing, when we'd go to like football games or baseball games to make a photo, say, Coach, you need to throw a pass, and he's got to catch it on the 30-yard line. He said, get away. I said, Coach, you've got to do it because you can only focus on the 30-yard line and get there, and you make your photo and hope you've got it. Is that different from today? And then the other big thing is you'd have all these holders because you've got to realize you got, I may have to have about 40 or 50 of these, and that's 40 photos because you got two on each one to make enough. And then you may have to have a changing bag and go change it from there. And not, now we just go click, 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 click. I say, you know, this is really a pretty neat thing we got going now. I'm telling you it's good. But to go and do that, I think the biggest thing, though, is the technology. I think the phones are better than any cameras that we almost ever used. But the, one of my favorite things I ever did is finally when we came out from this, and we'll look at the other cameras in a little bit, is, is like this. And everybody remembers a grandmama that had one of these? And Mr. Eastman Kodak, I had the opportunity to go to his house and go to Eastman Kodak and to actually see the things that he did in his knowledge of doing and, and to me it's like Henry Ford big money but to sit and watch every time he'd make a camera he'd make a size say 127 well the Japanese folks here they'd copy it and make one so he'd go make a 110 and everybody had to change all those things so he was a smart old cookie doing those things I got to go into his house it's probably I think he had a a dining room that would seat 150 folks but on his latter days, he died in a little room. It's probably a 10 by 10. But the knowledge and the foresight that he had in the camera thing from there, it's just, it's just the most amazing thing in the whole world. To actually go see where that was made and to see film, just imagine one room, probably 50 feet. All of it was a piece of plastic coated. They'd all do 100 exposure, do the whole thing. And then you cut it down in eight by 10 sheets, five by seven sheets, 35 millimeter, and do all the things they do for me. You couldn't turn the light on because the light would ruin the film. And the guy came along and started digital photography. He's one smart dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> I still kind of think maybe it's kind of like, good Lord knew I was gonna get where I couldn't blind and couldn't see and do the other, so he made everything automatic so you don't have to do anything, just mash the button. It auto focus, it does everything. To me, the secret to all of it, though, it's the most magic profession in all the whole world. To take this little magic box, and you can go out, like I heard him saying, going to go in the mountains and do waterfalls. You imagine before that, Ms. Moore could draw and paint. She'd go paint it. But I mean, he can make it now and have it right then. But the magic part of all of it, every camera that's ever made, you've got a lens on one end, and you've got film on the other end, or your card. And this is your magic box right there. You've got to have that magic chamber to make it really work. And then at that point in time, what you do with it, the type lens you put on there, and you're going to zoom or you run up closer. You're going to unzoom, you run backwards the other way. There's no such thing as zoom lenses in those days. But think about it today. But it can't take away, they haven't yet, the magic of doing that. But the phones that they make and the way they make them, is just, it's just so magic, it's just out of this world, the thing. But you, you even look at that part of it, and then it's like my, my mama had an old camera like this. And see the same thing? You got a magic box right in built in the same thing. So they really haven't changed that part. Have any of you really studied how it started first for a pinhole camera? You may have made a pinhole camera and look at all the things, and all of it's upside down. And you guys hadn't seen a lot, but tonight you can look some folks standing on their head, and you've got to say, is that his good side or his bad side? I said, hell, if he turned over, I could tell. But anyway, it's, 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 so, it's so different from what it is at those times from there. And you start off like that part of it. Tonight we're going to go, that was Mr. Moore, the first generation. Mr. Moore died in 1945. He was quite an inventor and things from there. Then a second generation of Mr. Von Dooley. And Mr. Dooley is 
wife was a relative of Ms. Moore in Alabama, and he came in 47, and he started from there, and then he actually had more studio, any of old folks, remember Tanning Country Studio? The two folks that went and started Tanning Country Studio, Mr. Dooley trained them, and they left and went on their own, and that's when I got my chance to come and have my job. So it was good and bad that they left, but gave me a job to do. So this is part of you said, well, well, how did I get started? It won't take long, but it's a pretty sad story. I'm telling you it is. But anyway, I've met so many photographers that have that magic touch, just sit and see it, and the people that just have to cram and work. Just, how do you, and God gives you that special gift, it sure is. And I promise you, I've got a little bit. I've worked really hard for mine. I started off in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We were sharecroppers, and there was six children and mom and dad. It's really tough to get art when you're chopping cotton and milking cows and hauling hay, guys. I'm telling you, not a lot of art out there. But I always knew in my fields doing this, I said, Lord, someday, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to be a cotton chopper. And I always had that thought to come. And I think man, I believe with all my heart, man's a divine thing to Jesus that give me something better to do. I, I really feel like I'm doing exactly what my Jesus man wants me to be doing. But in 1959 is the year I graduated from high school in Murfreesboro. <clears throat> well, in Murfreesboro, we had a thing in high school called diversified occupation. You could go to school a half a day and work a half a day. Well, I had an older brother. If you ever had an older brother, they get everything. You're the second. Mm, it's, but anyway, he was making all the money. I said, I'll fix your honey. So. One day I decided I was going to go to town. This was between my sophomore and junior year. And to get to town out in the country, you had about one option or two. You could either walk or catch a milkman when he came and picked up the truck. You ride in. So we rode to town. I told him I went out. The first place we came out, I said, I want to stop at that grocery store. And I went in there because Big Brother had a job there. I got in. He said, no, I don't need anyone. The second place I went to, he said, I don't need anyone, but my son is a photographer and he's looking for somebody. I said, you don't say. I said, he said, you know, he actually put me in his car, took me over to the studio. And I went in the studio and you got to realize where I was. There's never any air conditioner, never any running water, never anything like that at all. And we go in, he said, you're going to be working in the dark room. I said, if you don't know. So he takes me downstairs in the basement. And I go in down there and there's running water. And that's pretty good for him. And it was air conditioned. And Johnny Cash was singing on the radio. <laughs> and I said, now you going to pay me to stay down here? I'm your boy. That's where it really started. And that's how I got started in photography. But I worked really hard because I even loved it at that point, the magic of what you can see in a photo and see people come back and say, you know, for the rest of my life, you don't know how much that meant to my family. So I think we as photographers have a great obligation when you go out to do, you can't take just go out there halfway. You need to have your stuff put together. And I would hear those things happen, the things to do. I said, you know, this is really, really, really something. So in 1959, we had a Tennessee Professional Photographers Association is all over the state. And then Mr. Delbridge, whom had trained me to start with, knew Mr. Dooley, and he actually told Mr. Dooley that he should hire me to come to work here. So I remember when I got on the bus in Murfreesboro heading out, my mom was kind of crying. Dad said, oh, he'll be back home the week. <laughs> Say it. I, said, I really would have even said that, but anyway, I couldn't go back. So anyway, we got on there. We came down and every, on the Greyhound bus. We came through down 100 Highway in every little bitty town. I said, Lord, don't let this be the place. Don't. Finally, we got to Jackson. Then Mr. Dooley came and met me at the bus station, and I got off in that point in time, the old YMCA building was across from Kispers. And I lived up there for two weeks and didn't know a soul, didn't know anything. If my daddy hadn't been a smart ass, I'd have been home, I'd already been home too, but I had to prove him wrong. You see, anyway, you go through those things, but then the magic really started. And Mr. Von Dooley is the neatest, best, wonderful Christian man he could ever be. He took me in, he had two daughters and he loved me like his son. I've never had anyone in my whole life to believe in me as much as he believed in anybody. And he, he did all those things, and he came and started teaching the things. But I'm telling you, in the days that I did it, being a professional photographer is really extremely hard work. If you go in almost any high school in West Tennessee, look at the composites, 
you're going to find more studio photos on there. Today I have a couple here that I brought out. I've got the first annual that Jackson High School ever had in 1913. And Moore Studios got an ad in the book. I've got one from Union University, their first one. Moore Studio, Progressive Art Photography, 1913. That's pretty good. Now, all of our whole, whole life as Moore Studio has been about you have to, you have to know that what a privilege it is if somebody comes, will you make photographs of my family or you come to my school and do this? And how much grandparents and mamas and daddies and even later in your life how much it means it's not something you get to go and play it the pressure is on and it better be right and it's it's really striving for that excellent thing has been the thing that was so good for me but so very hard at the same time i remember those first three years in murfreesboro i wasn't allowed to make photos i was simply my apprenticeship, learning negatives, how to do the process and everything. You got to realize then when you got your piece of film out, you had to go to the dark room. You put it in a little holder and a pan and you do it. It's got to be total darkness. One of my favorite stories on Mr. Moore that I always like, sometimes you old folks get to know, I really like to drink a cold beer every now and then. But it appears that before air conditioning and everything got started, Mr. Moore would go get an electric fan and put it in the dark room. He'd get a block of ice. And he'd put the fan behind it, and when it's 100 degrees in there, it's pretty cool compared to it. And sometime he'd get him a bucket of beer, but he'd have cold beer with it. I said, that's starter fluid, that's good stuff. You know that? So anyway. But the things he did, the way we did all the things, it's just, it's just so magic. And the things with the cameras we're going to sit and talk about a little bit, this camera is where we started from there. And this is where you do one-on-one. -on -one. The next camera over on that side is what we went to a twin lens. If any of you ever used, you've used a twin lens, haven't you? Well, the twin lens is where you look through one lens and you actually make it with the other. But you've got to sit and focus it to get it in focus. But it's not closed. But on this camera, compared to one at a time, we had a roll of 100 feet long and you can make 250 photos on one roll of film without changing it. Because you've got to realize a changing bag, y'all ever seen any of those? I, I've got a couple, but you put your hands in, zip, and you change all the film out. But you can sit there and do 100 kids and just say, this is good, you know that? But we didn't even know digital was coming, how good it can be. You can do thousands now with a camera that doesn't even weigh anything. And you, you carry this thing, like go to a wedding for about four or five hours, and carry that, plus another bag with all your holders and all the other things, and you get home, you, you're pretty well wet. It's, it's been a, a busy, busy day. But just but the most, maybe just think about your phones today and all the magic things they do. And the, the camera I had a while ago is a Hasselblad, if y'all have ever done that. Those were the cameras that I used. And when I stopped doing weddings, I kind of went out and I was slow getting in digital because that mess won't ever hardly work or anything. But anyway, you know how it is. I understand there's a story with Mr. Dooley. A man actually came from Polaroid and said, I'd like to sell you some stock in Polaroid. He said, what is that? He said, it's going to be instant pictures. He said, now what? He said, that mess isn't going to work. So Pop didn't buy any money in Polaroid, you know him? But anyway, it's, you, you, you've got to look a lot further, I think, than some of us ever did that way. But, but, the, but the neat thing is I sometimes try to sit down and Y'all ever done any retouching, I guess, with Facebook, all that? But all of ours was always with artists. You have that artist. It may take them two to three years before you let them just do everything they needed to do and do it right. I can sit down there and, pfft, and I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just such a magic thing. And I think about what's it going to be like tomorrow? But I'm glad I get to know a little while longer. I think this is a, the best period to come from even what I've seen to what it's going to now. It's just one of the most magic things in the whole world with it. Some of the photos and things that I personally have made is this little thing. Some is good and bad from there. But anyway, some of the important people you photograph. I photographed three or four probably governors and things. But when Mr. Al Gore started running... And he wasn't one of my favorite people, but he was my friend. He came to Jackson High School to talk to the civics class, and they asked me to bring him and introduce him because I was a photographer at the school. And I took him, 
and through all, all the years, and after he became vice president, when he would come to town, then I'd get to call and I'd get to go make photos. Well, to me, it's, you know, again, this cotton field mentality thing comes back. You can't really speak to him. You, you, you sit there and you be ready. When he wants one, he said, come here, boy, and you go do it from there. But when I could go, I could put on my little A button, sit out, and I could just walk around anywhere, and I was all right. But before you get there, the FBI, CIA, everybody checks your social security, look at your camera, want to see everything, want to see the film. I said, no, you can't see the film. But anyway, it's just, but just our, our world is so exciting to, to see how it's happening, what it is from there, and to actually think one of my greatest blessings that where I started, and I actually own a studio, a business in a city that I actually go and make work and have for about, I've been here some 58 years doing so when we did our 100th year thing, and I've got y'all a roll of film to give each one of y'all that when we had our 100th year celebration to do that, to, to go back, though, and just kind of dream. I've got a photo of Mr. and Ms. Moore in one of the first cars that they had, and they had a flat tire, and they were out making, trying to fix the flat tire, and somebody made a photo, and I've got a big one of that enlarged to do. But think about all the neat things that we live in do today. It, isn't, it, isn't it just a magic time to do those things? But you know, the amazing thing to me is our miracle is so great. And it's many things that I've really found in my life, always in your life, some old gray-headed man, boy, let me tell you how it ought to be. Well, I have found out they don't have a clue what I'm talking about and really don't want to hear it. So I try real hard not to say anything, you know that? But it sure is different that way. Anybody got a question at this point? I told you you'd be born. <clears throat> this is a photo here of my little garden outside. Some probably 15 years or so ago, they took down three buildings. And when you go outside, if you look on that very wall, there's a photo of Moore Studio and the other three buildings in there. And when they tore the buildings down, it's when I've got to go and actually put in my courtyard. All my life, I'd wanted a place to where I could go and set up and do. And when you go out there, and I've told you guys you're... Tommy and Rich, if you want to come and do that at times, you'd sure be welcome to have a meeting and come and have one in my courtyard here. But if, according to what time of day it is, I've always got a main light coming somewhere. I've got a backlight if you need one. But anyway, it's just, it's just, you just know it's magic and you just feel it and you just know it and know you've had a part of it. And like the trees, I didn't plant them, but they came up and I didn't cut them down. So it's kind of like I planted them, you know. So every tree out there is my tree, and we did those things. And then I wanted my fountain. Well, from a fountain for a while, I wanted fish in it. I don't know if you ever had a fish pond, but mine's a concrete one. I was afraid if it's too deep that somebody might fall in it or drowned or something. So, no, I've got one about four inches. So the thing about it is with your fish, when they're in there and it's lighted, they go to the bathroom about 24 hours a day. So about once a week, I was a fish poop cleaner up. And I said, the fish have got to go. We're going to get fish sandwiches. It's going to be over with. You know that? But anyway, you learn lots of things as you go along and do things. I think a couple things while you're in this studio, if you look at the master rail system, we were one of the few anywhere in this country that's got anything like that. But you don't see cords on the floor. So now, so we don't trip on them, we run our heads into the light. So you can't win them all. But we've always been progressive to that point to really stay ahead. The thing that I have found with mine and Mr. Duty, when you get to be a certain age, though, it doesn't push you. You don't go as much as you really want to. And in my, my times, I've, I wouldn't trade places with anybody living or ever lived. I had, in my day, anybody did anything, I was their photographer. But now it's a totally different thing. But, you know, everybody gets to have their day. But to look at the things that we did and which, what you young people and things are doing now, it's just pretty exciting too. And the only, only thing you, you can do anything you want to do, if you believe it enough and you'll work at it, it's yours to be done. And to me, that's the magic part of it. I know trying to do commercial photography, a friend, friend of mine brought me handsets, the big phones. You shine a light on it, it shines right back out. So you learn to build a tent. There's so many things, but the knowledge, 
if, 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 I, if people want to go to movies, I can give a flip about a movie, but go watch it. Watch that focus changing over there, that light over there, broad light, narrow light, back. I mean, I can be high just watching a movie and, and all the things happening in it. But I don't care anything about what's really doing. Cause if they shoot them Matt Dillon or something, that's pretty good. But, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, just think about sometime, open a book and all the photos in there. Get you a really old book. There's no photos in there. We're such, we're such blessed people right now. And this, the magic that you all are part of now, you felt some part of it. And like I was saying earlier, that's why I don't have been. It's because all oh, y'all do. I know how much fun it is. I mean, I still like to do that. That's what you're doing today is doing that part of it. And it, to me, is when you can get that camera, go out and make a photograph of somebody you really like, your dog or anybody, and it's good. You say, and I made that. How special is that? I mean, that is, it doesn't get any better than what that really is. So anyway, I'm going to do one other little thing, and we're going to break a minute. We're going to set up, and we'll set our cameras up where we can look through and do from there. Some of these days, one of the projects and things that I'm working on, I don't know if you've heard of it, is Association for the Preservation of Tennessee Antiquities. Y'all ever heard of any of that? Anyway, the APTA Antiquities of Jackson, it's, it's an organization. I understand if we could get a grant, and they may be working on it, but any of y'all write good grants or anything, one of my goals and hopes I would like to have, I've got a couple, I'm not dead yet, but you take all the negatives, which I've got thousands, thousands, and more. But anyway, if we could get all of those scanned and put into a computer, and when anybody comes to this city, we don't have... We never photographed a lot of buildings because they didn't pay you money like people would. So we were more, but I think it'd be so neat. So I want to go look at my grandpa. I look up Mitch Carter. So there it is right there. And you have that. And the whole secret to it is if we could get the, we've got to get the program written to where every time I put in Tommy Asbel's name, every time it's, it's going to come out to where if he's Rotary Club, Photo Club, it's all got to match. You've got to have the program. All of mine are negatives. I don't have many prints. I've got to get a scanner. I understand scanners anywhere from three to six thousand dollars to meet the codes or whatever that part of it is. Then I understand the whole secret of it is is we could put it with a foundation. So someday maybe a group like you guys getting started or some others would help fund something and, and you know as you think about it, I've had my days, but how about every year or something, y'all get together as a group and said, let's add these images now, because 100 years from now, how great would yours be? But I've got one, they're all, they don't get to vote anymore, they're gone. So if we did it from there, but you know, maybe you guys think about that sometime, to work on those sort of things. I don't know eventually what's going to happen to it. I have sold my school division to a young couple that live in Humboldt. It's Moore Studio School Division. Didn't know an awful lot about it, but they're just fantastic young people. And the thing that got me is a computer. I'm not that computer, but they just know so many neat things that way. So I really am almost positive I'm going to have four generations. My daughter told me after 100 years, she said, Dad, what are you trying to prove after 100 years? I said, I don't know, Princess, but I'm not through yet. You know then? And I just feel like it's something else. That, but to think... Four generations of Moore Studio real going from what Mr. Moore started. And even with, I've been, I've been in the studio longer than any one of the other two were because I came in 59 and 57 years or so I've got going. And I live upstairs and have for years. And it's the most magic thing. You take a cold, cold rainy day or snowy day, or if you take a bright sun, it takes me about five seconds to get to work. Come down and get my paper, go out on my veranda and, have my coffee and read my paper and count a blessing and do things. I live in a magic world, guys. I really do. It's just an awesome, awesome thing to do. But some days the time goes along, somebody has a real good idea from there, and I sure would like to see that be done if, if that could ever be done. Any questions from anybody? Yes, sir. Mr. Mitch has dealt more with architectural photography than with portrait photography. So see, how, see, where did you start Mr. Moore really started it, and I'm, I remember <laughs> another really dumb time, but when you go and stand like with a lady, a man's hand is always full, a lady's hand's always broken and pointing. 
if you got a double chin, you lean forward and raise it up. Yeah, I mean, you study the body. You study what, how can I make you look so good? You say, I want to give you money for that because you did good. That's my obligation. You know that? I wouldn't just, I'm going to go shoot you. That's, 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 I wasn't allowed to do that. I had to learn so many things to alone. But in the same token, when you learn that lighting, like I look at lighting and come across and things from there, the same thing when you sit down and go outside someday and don't do anything, just go outside and sit down, look at a building, watch the light change, watch a building change all day. The magic of the light is what makes everything do. Look at the texture of the building. Look at it. And anyway, I think it's, on the film thing in the first one, when you like mama's camera, don't do it with the sun in your face, have the sun behind your head. You know, there's a lot to be said for those things too. But we learn. But I, I think after a while, like aerial photos, that was never really a fun thing for me. But most of my schools always wanted an aerial photos, and I'd get calls for it. And you get in an airplane, you're sitting there, and the propeller will hold the window up, and you do it, and he leans you over, and you hold your head out, go click, 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 and do that. Well, that was not the most fun thing I ever did. I'd rather photograph a pretty lady anytime and do that mess, but anyway. But it's, you, you've got to go before you do it. You go one time and say, well, the only problem with it is the right's on the wrong side. I said, dang, I need to learn that mess, don't I? So you start learning those things like that. And after a while, you, I guess light more than any other one thing it's been my biggest thing. I've got a book laying out there that a friend gave me. It's on lighting, the color temperature of lighting. Do you all study that? Like the color temperature of daylight is what? 155, 157. Tungsten lighting is 34 to 36. You know, in the olden days, you always had your certain film. You had to use a tungsten film. Or you had to use filters with it and all that sort of thing. So it, it just... It just does so many things. Another thing I wanted to tell you, I've got two books there that I've co-authored that I'm real pleased. It's a history of Jackson. We've done those particular things. And one of these days, I'm thinking about working on one other book to where it just might be mine. But one of the others is a Miss Tennessee. For about 47 years, I was official photographer for Miss Tennessee. I'm telling you, photographing pretty ladies, I'm really good at that in my opinion. I sure do enjoy it anyway. But sometimes to, to re go down to the Civic Center and go to the Miss Tennessee room and Miss America room. Go, go sometime to the city hall or county. Look at the past mayors and things. And it's all more studio all the way through. And so I think the thing, it, you, you know, it's just so special that you, you won't forget to get up. You just can't wait till you get up and get started and do things. And yeah, I've been there someday and you didn't have everything. But I mean, but you really... It, it, it's, 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 it's not just a, a little thing you take lightly. It's not something you go out, I'm going to get to go photograph three kids today. <laughs> you better go to praying for his little boys, get your shoes, nail them to the floor so the little shits can't run. I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, it, it's work. You have got to plan. You've got you to have a, what are you going to do? Because when I get through, I want that mama to say, that's the best photos my kids have ever had. I said, well, that's a pretty good deal. You know that? But it didn't just really happen. It, because it happened because you worked on it to make sure it was going to happen that way. And that's the important thing for me. I'm going to get all y'all to get a roll of this film if you would. And let's break for a few minutes and let me reset these things up. Sir, would you be so kind? Would you let everybody just get one roll out of there? If you look at it, folks, it's Moore Studio celebrating our 100th year anniversary. So if y'all put it up someday, you can have something old as dirt or old as film or something. Anybody got a question on anything? Did y'all actually do dark room work, going in the dark room and doing those? I've seen it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and it smells so bad, but it's so good, you know that? Did you get a roll, sir? I did, thank you. Thank you. And they project that thing down on, you see that image down there, and you got to realize now what is a negative? It's opposite a positive. So all of a sudden, if you have white hair is black but it changes around but you put that in there and that image i said i'm gonna go get my notebook paper and try it he said no that's not how it really works you know but if you ever get the if the magic ever grabs you if it ever grabs you really you'll just be you may not do but you'll 
you'll seek out sometimes to go back and just do certain parts of it because it really will get a hold of it. And it'll be wonderful what it does for you. Let's break for a minute. I love y'all. Thanks for your attention. Thank y'all. He'd go process, he'd go expose it, bring it to me. He'd pay me to process it, make prints of it. They wasn't good. He said, okay, I'm going to get another one. He'd go do it again. I had continuous revenue, but it doesn't happen anymore. Because you go to your computer now and anything that didn't work, and you just simply sit down and say, this is what I'll do. And they've got like what I don't do. All my things that I use is Picasso. Any of you use Picasso on there? A few things on it. It'll straighten and do. And then uh, we've got a retouch program that does that. And I have found with my retouching, I have access to just really photo artists. And they can do more in five minutes than I could for a day. And I really make my money making photos and let them do the art thing. But they've got to understand the curvature of a face, an arm, or if it's too heavy here, you take that off. And all the, I mean, it needs to be as much of an artist doing that as it is the person making the photo. I said, I took it to Lightroom. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, but you don't know what you didn't know because that's not how you're going to really do it and make it be that way. The thing I would relate to that, I've had several friends that paint paintings of people. They bring and say, Mr. Carr, the only problem with it is this arm's a lot longer than my other arms. And see, my arms are not that way. But she perceived it and painted it that way. But what you do, when you do your photos, you've got to have enough sense to say, now if I do this and shorten that arm, guess what? They're not going to like it. So, I mean, you have to know those things before you ever get your camera out and start doing the, the photos that way. And it, the, the, the knowledge of it is once you get it, it's it's never gotten born. It just, it, it, it's born if I have to photograph. You've got to realize going to a school and sometimes we'd maybe have two or three photographers. Everybody do a hundred kids, but you sit down and do a hundred kids in one day, boom, boom, boom. It's not much. You may, you may spend four days getting every light just right and it can't change, can't change. All that's good, perfect exposure, perfect light and all that, but your brain doesn't get to work in it, you know, it just, it just, only changing do if it's a big tall guy or short guy, you got to move your camera up and down, but that's about all the moving you really do with it is that part of it. So to really, to really, I still like a really challenge where you can go and really do photos and do those things. It's just, it's, it's just, and, and I know it in my little camera room here, I, that's mainly my light back there. And then from there, I've got little kickers. I know another fun thing I've got here that I forgot to do. Y'all use little eyes where you want to kick your other lights and things off. This was one of Mr. Dooley's. You take three flashlight batteries and put them in there, plug that into your light, and then the other light would hit that and make this light go off. And you look how big the things we've got now are. So it just keeps getting better and better. I think one of these days, you flash and you don't. I say, that's good, you know? But anyways, it'll get that way one of these days. But the magic of it, the big thing, is know your lighting and know your body. You just have to, you just got to study the body and know what's going from that part of it. And like we said a while ago, sit there, see that double chin, raise up tall, and lean over. I don't have a double chin, check it out. I mean, you can get rid of it. <laughs> don't tell me I had a double chin, I'm not gonna buy a photo, cause you didn't know, you know that? If I had my whiskers, you won't ever have a double chin anyway, sir. <laughs> That's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> it looks good on you, though. It really does. Do you ever photograph where you can do and get those lights and kick that? Mm, you could do a character photo mm -mm -mm, with a black thing, with a black hat. And oh. It would be good. It'd be good. <laughs> you kind of his inspiration. Yeah, baby, you go do it. You go do it, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to have the way, but you, you're right behind you, isn't it? That's what matters. That's as good as the other for me. Okay? We'll get the other camera. It's not going to change a lot for me. The, to me, the biggest, the biggest difference of all is when we finally got to where we don't have to look at everything upside down. And you got to realize in these cameras, you didn't look through the lenses because they got you off, but you had to focus, and your zoom is when you walked in or walked out. There was no zoom. And you try to focus on something that's moving all the time. Now, it's, 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 it's a tough thing to do sometimes. Go into the chicken yard and see if you can get a chicken to be still. <laughs> I like your strategy. Yeah. You said you got to have a plan. I mean, I, I mean you got to do it. I had to go borrow some fishing line, though, to do it. But you got to catch the sucker before you tie him up, you know, then. <laughs> he was probably resistant. And then you got to have the little lines retouched out because they're going to say, well, what was wrong with my chicken tied up? 
because see, I photographed a big bull outside. That was good. We got lobster, and you know that was good, and the fish, and all the things you did. But you try to photograph a flipping chicken walking around the yard. Now that was <laughs> difficult for me. Photographed a coon hound one time, but the man could give him orders, and he would do almost anything you want to do. So it's good, but. I don't think chickens take orders. Maybe Colonel Sanders could give him some orders. <laughs> but other than that, I don't really know. Well, other than that chicken, what's your most memorable picture? You, you know, I have a lot of folks up there ask me about, tell me about the wedding, something happened. I mean, every, every time I go, I just do normal people. They just meet there and they just in love with each other and it's just really good. And they get married and they care about each other. I mean, I don't want something to really happen that didn't, you know, didn't, and very rarely would I have anything. And I think with mine as much as anything is to, I, I, I never will forget, I don't know what y'all's religion are and it just don't mean, but I didn't know much about Catholic folks at all. In my first Catholic wedding, I was photographing the most beautiful little girl and the daddy's big old guy, and she had daddy's arm. Looked around and said, Daddy, I love you. And he was crying. She was crying. I was crying. I said, they may be half bad, but you know, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> but I mean, it's, 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 it's the memories. It's yeah. the opportunity you have to create something that nobody else will get to do it. I was the only one there, and it was my memory. And I still go, people said, what were you doing 48 years ago? I said, you were photographing my way. And I said, yeah, we had a good time, didn't we? So, you, you know, those are the fun things. I told you about the biggest stupid thing. That I did, right? What'd you do? When I didn't have my film threaded all the way, and I took half that wedding, you know, taking pictures. You learn to pray, pray, don't you? <laughs> you learn to pray. God, could you kind of help me a little bit on this? You know, but. Wasn't, wasn't loaded. But we learned you never did that again, I did never you? Never did that again. The, the other most memorable thing for me doing a wedding is so I did a, a black wedding one time. I was the only white person there. I've done a lot of those. Yeah. And it was just normal. And you find that you really are pretty good folks, don't you? Straight up. Say, so what? But have you noticed you need two more F-stops of light? <laughs> <laughs> Forget this F-11, honey. You better get about five, six if you're going to get anything in that face. <laughs> but it, it, it turned out great. I mean, it really... You know, but again, no. that's the lighting thing on it from there. And But you, you know, with mine is... What, what, what do you do to get high or anything? I, I, I love to drink beer, and I really do. I mean, this is, I've done all cake, but I'm telling you, to really get high, though, is to, to where you can really photograph it. I mean, you just feel it, and you just know it's, and you oh, that's good. You know that? Thank you, Lord. You can't help it. I had another wedding that was an unusual one for me first, another first for me. Back a month or two oh. ago, last wedding I did, I had a, a wedding, uh, a proposal and a baby reveal all in the same package. That went in one day, though, was it? That was about a week, wasn't it? All in one, all in one day. <laughs> they come, they, we did the wedding. Same people. <laughs> they proposed. They proposed. They got, no, they didn't. <laughs> the wedding and the baby reveal. <laughs> <laughs> they, came, they, they came to me at the reception, and the, the groom did, and he said, Look, he said, I want you to be careful and watch this real close. He said, when, you know, the bride throws her bouquet, he said, she's going to throw it to this one certain girl, make sure she catches it, and when she does, this guy's going to come out of the crowd, and he's going to get down and propose to her right there. Oh, how sweet. That's good and stuff. She threw the bouquet right to that girl. And then here he came, you know, he got down on one knee and he, he whispered, we couldn't hear what Did you tell him you did wedding photos and signed another contract? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, at, at, toward the end of the reception, I saw these two ladies come in with this white package and I thought it was just a wedding gift or something. I'd already walked away and I kind of watched and I thought, uh, maybe I better get up there close. And I, so I started walking up that way. She opened it up and it was a little... Uh, or the ultrasound of the baby. That's good. So. See, that's the things that matter. Yeah. When you say that, I had it probably a couple months ago. Is a young couple from Lexington. And the gentleman called me and says, I'm gonna, I want to come to your studio and I'm going to propose to her 
and she doesn't know that. I'm going to say, well, what the hell are you going to do if she says no? Do I still make the photo? I think I will, I will get paid beforehand just in case, you know. <laughs> but it was so very neat. He worked it everything out. And he said to me, and said, okay, and I made two or three. And I said, okay, now, sir, now, if you'll do, take this pose. Now, he said, yes, you got on your knees. Yet. I mean, it's, you know, that's good stuff, you know. Don't tell me somebody, man, I hate you because my photos are terrible. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't, that's. That should never have to happen. You know, that's terrible. It's all memories. I mean, it, it's, it's things you'll remember for your lifetime. I've got the best memories of anybody in the whole world, you know it? Yep. It's wonderful. All right, you heavy guys going to carry these cameras again now because that was not on a tripod, but y'all going to help me set it over and we're going to look at it, all right? You can scoot that one on back. It'd be so kind. <laughs> 